In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. Hi, Chadwick. Frank, what's up, man? I'm I'm good. We've we've got a we've got someone lurking among us. They wrote on a chalkboard. If you're watching along at home, they them himself, Art Art Artemis. Is it Art? Is it just art, 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 art? Is it beyond art? I know you was art. Art, art Vark. I mean, I, I'm down for whatever. Um, Mr. So Vark, Art Cervantes, I did, I, how are you? I did work at a company. Hi, my name is Art Cervantes. Um, and uh, I did work at a company where the CEO called me Artemis. And that stuck within the organization. But, ah, um, okay. And uh, that was, although there is one friend of ours that we know collectively that does call me Artemis in text threads. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> but I'm not in person. Um, but yeah, my full name, if you guys want to know it, is Juan Arturo Cervantes Chacon. Um, ah, and see. and when I was in kindergarten, um, no one could say my my name Arturo, so I started going by Art. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're saying you're you're going to ask me, but wait a minute, you said that your name was Juan Arturo, and why mm-hmm. are you going by your middle name? So in a lot of Latin cultures, uh, mm-hmm. and you know this this is also you know the whole Mans languages. So your French, your Italians, uh, you mm-hmm. have people who are like Jean Francois, Jean Luc, um, um, you know, Picard, Benito, famously, yeah, of course, uh, you know, and there's also Giancarlo, Gian Alfredo in Italian. So um, and a lot of these folks end up going by their middle name, like myself. So um, that first one there, <laughs> my first name rather, is one number one below. It's more for flow than, sure. than for um, as as my actual real name. So um, that's uh, some background on my name. Yeah. So now I guess we can wrap this up. <laughs> Where to go from here? Oh boy, um, um, one off the list <laughs> done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, I think but, I've had, like I think I've maybe called you uh, Artemis Prime before. Uh, just I for, like it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's worked out. And so <laughs> yeah. um, for the uninitiated, first off, I feel like probably there's there's a significant crossover between. Uh, people that listen to part of what you do, which is the the, the DWA, that's Driving Wow Awesome podcast um, and various driving adventures and such. Um, so people might know you from that. Uh, you might also know uh, Artemis Prime, as we're suddenly calling him, uh, from the world of Radwood. If you're familiar with the Radwood shows, which of course you are, um, then uh, Ra- uh, Rad. Rad Cervantes here is uh, is one of the <laughs> chief proprietors of Radwood Properties, um, and he's working uh, on that and with that to this very day. Um, uh, he's a retired uh, lemons racer, perhaps. Um, what else? What else do you have under your belt? Um, <laughs> perhaps. And- um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I am one of the co-founders of Radwood. Uh, you know, we it is very public knowledge that we sold the company to Haggerty a couple of years ago, and I stayed on board as the director. And Warren, who's also one of the co-founders and still part of the Drive Wallace awesome podcast, um, uh, stuck around as well as the head of operations for Radwood. Um, the rest of the crew sort of dispersed, and uh, you know, Lane still contributes, um, you know, to a certain extent. But um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I, I've, I guess, where to start? I don't know. I mean, in terms of background, you know, I've been in into cars pretty much my whole life. Um, early on, as a kid, I, I will admit that I was much more into airplanes, but I was still a car person. Uh, but my dad was a pilot, so I grew up going to air shows. You know, I spent a lot of time at airplane hangars as a kid. Uh, and then also, there's a lot of crossover between uh, airplane people and car people. And one sure. of the things that you get exposed to very early on is that people that have hangars where they store their planes usually make use of that extra space and stuff mm-hmm. cars in there. So, um, so I've, I've kind of, I've always been around both and machines of all types. Um, I grew up, my dad had a body shop growing up and a detail business. So, so. um, spent a lot of time, uh, you know, around dust and, uh, Bondo and, <laughs> uh, filler and oh, all, sorts of, all sorts of good stuff that's healthy for you as a, as a child, especially your respiratory Explains system. A lot, yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, uh, yeah. And then from there, you know, I, uh, being a car geek pretty much as, as in my whole life, uh, I have to say that, um, my first car, which is my, uh, my unofficial yes. first car, I call it, which is like the big joke is that I was given, um, a Buick Regal, a 1983 Ooh. Buick Regal. And I consider that my car, I consider that a car zero for me. It's not what I call my my car, because um, at the same time, when I was 16, I had my sights set on getting a BMW 2002 because that's what I really wanted as mm. my first. 
which is very similar to a Bu Buick Regal. They're, famously. they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, front engine, rear wheel drive. Uh, they have wheels. Um, they do have, they could seat four people. Jet, um, mostly made of metal. Mostly made of metal, um, except that my Buick Regal had velour interior. In oh, my, boy. Uh, yeah, and my uh, 71 2002 had a uh, vinyl interior. But basically, you know, while I was on the hunt for that, I was scrounging up my, my dough to, with the intention of buying that as my first car. Given said car, drove the Regal. I had it for about three months before I bought my 71 2002, which is kind of the car that kicked off my personal enthusiasm for yes. vehicles. and. And, uh, and and wrenching and tuning and all that. And so very quickly, I started, I kind of started getting into like the canyon carving stuff. You know, I lived, I grew up in Northern mm -hmm. California. And so I was up around a lot of Twisty Mountain Roads. Um, and, you know, I, on that car, I, I did quite a bit of stuff. You know, uh, I did a three, I think it was, yeah, I did a, I can't remember what LSD I put in it, but I put an LSD in it. Um, I upgraded the brakes, I upgraded the suspension. Um, did just did a, like, third, like E21, like E21 stuff? E21 stuff. I had E21 Recaros in it, uh, and oh, I killer. also uh, and I had a. Uh, I think I put, shoot. I think I put a 3838 downdraft on it, and um, I can't remember what else. It was a long ass time ago. But anyways, I it, um, ended up like rocking that car for a while. Um, that again, abridged version. Um, as we yes. had a little a pre pre podcast convo, um, yeah. that led to a bunch of other BMW 2002s, and that immediately led into autocrossing. So I got really into autocrossing cool. like early college. Um, and continued to do so uh, for many years. So autocross for a long time and did so in a lot of the different cars that I had. So, um, and at some point in college, um, I switched over. I, I mean, I went back and forth uh, and, and, and especially later in college, I, I started <laughs> flipping cars for as like supplemental income, but What's that I like? always had, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's sometimes successful no for the most part it was pretty good but i mean i had a lot of different cars that i wrenched on usually i had yeah. a couple you know two or three at a time and uh whenever i could and uh and it was a lot of crx's a lot of integras a lot of miatas yes. uh a lot of hondas and um you know i had gsrs and i had all sorts of all manner of civics uh you know efs egs and eks and um mostly set up for canyon covering and autocross duty. Like I, I was never really a high power drag guy. That wasn't really my thing. Sure. Um, and then once um, they started getting stolen like crazy uh, and my, <laughs> and then my EG got stolen, oh, no. I was like, all right, I'm kind of over this. You know, I, I don't want to, it's, it's just a shitty scene. So um, what did I buy right after that? I can't remember. I, I started getting it. Oh, I bought an E30. And so I think that was, yeah, that was my first E30. I got a 318IS, uh, which if you're familiar, that's okay. the 91 nice. only. 91 only. Yep. Yep. Yeah, M42 powered car with an LSD, a 410 LSD. And that was a fun car. Um, and that was like a, a really interesting introduction into sort of like balance and front end feel and, you know, how much of a difference it makes to have that engine sit so far back and have that revier motor and kind of like that dynamic. And um especially because I had driven my friends 325 ISs and 325s. And so um, drive, driving that, like, you know, I noticed, okay, it's technically slower from zero to 60, but it's that epitome of slow car fast, right? It's like, yeah. I don't know, 140-ish horsepower or whatever, but it's all yeah, a good at day. the very top. You know, you're all at 7,000 RPM. Full valve float. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, and then, yeah, from there, I, I had a ton of E30s. Uh, and, uh, you know, once I got a real job and a real career, I started to afford, uh, I was able to afford some cooler stuff and then got into, um, uh, you know, E30 M3. Um, I had a 993. I had uh, a lot of uh, several E36 M3s, uh, everything from like E36. I had one that was DSP prep, like full race car. Uh, and that was actually a 325 IS, uh, and then cool. had all sorts of E36 M3s, uh, everything from you know coupes to sedans and all that jazz, uh, M345s, and uh, yeah, I think I, yeah, then things sort of escalated. You know, I um, I got um, the opportunity to really kind of build the ultimate BMW 2002, and at that point, you know, the I ultimate had, driving machine, if you will. Yeah, I, exactly. And so the, it, it was one one of those situations where you know. When I was younger, I did everything I could afford. And at the time, you know, it was, it was just, you know, literally paycheck to paycheck. And then yep. at this point, you know, we're talking about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so, um, you know, where, um, and not even that, maybe a little more recent, um, but I had a 2002 and I've skipped a ton of cars. You know, I had oh, yeah. a lot of 
cars. Um, I had, I think I, the, the other day, actually, about a couple of weeks ago, I tallied it up. I had 12 Miatas, I think, 12 NA Miatas. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, all different kinds. I had, you know, M editions, uh, I had a C option package. I had like super stripper models. I had, you know, all of them, you know, I yes. had 1.6s and 1.8s. And um, for the most part, all of them were super nice. Uh, and, and, you know, at, that was especially when I was like, going through that process of like seeking out like clean examples like that I knew I could tinker with a little bit and then flip ultimately. And that was sure. pretty fruitful. Um, what I think actually real quick in the Miata is the coolest one I had, that was a pretty, pretty good autocross car. And I actually got like top time of day multiple times with that car uh, humble was humble brag. It was a, it was a 91. So originally okay. 1.6, but it had, um it had a 2000 uh, bot 2000 block uh, from an NB and a 2001 head. So, um, you know, you get BBTI and, um, actually it was a 99 block, I think in a 2001 head anyways, but, uh, but good setup. And the thing is with a car like that, you're immediately outclassed. So the class was irrelevant. It was just all for, yeah. it was all time, you know, all like, for fun. And, uh, and, and it was one of those situations where I would, I used to autocross with like every organization just cause I wanted seat time. So I did like BMW CCA. I did, you know, uh, American autocross series. I did golden gate Lotus club, you know, you name it. I was there UFO. I did all of it. Uh, and so, and UFO is the Dotson one, uh, in the Bay area. And yep. so, um, and, and the idea there is, you know, I, I just wanted to ultimately like own my skills and like, you know, and, and improve, but at this, I always like putting like a, my crosshairs were always on like the, the fastest car sure. and or the, 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 you know, the, the, the driver to beat of the day. Right. And so, right. Um, and that particular car was like really well sorted. I had, I mean, pretty much everything that could be done to it, like suspension wise and, um, and that engine setup. And one thing that's really cool about Miatas and everybody knows this, it's the epitome of slow car fast, right? Is that all that power is totally usable. And so you're always on it and it's very, you can extract all that power. And in a tight autocross course, that means that yep. you can go very fast where if you're in a Corvette or something, you know, you, you're, it's way more throttle sensitive, right? So it's easier sure. to blow it. Um, so it's kind of cheating, but anyways. Um, so yeah, going so, back to so what do you have? What do you have now? Like yeah. what's what, what's in the, what's in yeah, the stable yeah. today? I was gonna mention the two, the two thousand two real quick. So yeah, because um, uh, it, it's an important lesson that I that has basically um, uh, ultimately made me uh, make certain decisions in life, <laughs> um, sure. namely that I will never do carburetors again. Um, and okay. so. Uh, it was an opportunity again to get basically do like whatever I wanted and build like the ultimate 2002, fit, however I wanted to build it. Right. I, I thought, okay, sure. I'm going to create sort of like a period pop, right? Like it was a 75 mint green car. I put Euro bumpers on it, you know, did the whole thing. And like, I'm actually a weirdo. I like Euro bumper square tail cars more than round tail. How tail dare cars. you, sir? I'm a sick man. Um, and, uh, and this is sort of, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to use this platform as a really clean car, no rust. And, um, you know, it had a lot of work done to it. Um, and namely the engine was high compression, you know, cam in there, uh, exhaust, you know, suspension, blah, blah, blah. But, um, when I got it, it had a single side draft and it was weird. Okay. It was like this, it's like this an trippy SU? manifold. No, it was a side draft. It was like this trippy manifold on just a single side draft carburetor and, uh, hmm. on a Weber. And, uh, I, I, I mean, I was super compromised and I knew like, you know, Hey, this is a really hot motor. Like there's a lot more like potential here. And so, uh, I wanted to go dual side draft and uh, do like, you know, nice little trumpets on it and everything. And it took me probably six months to find someone to actually work on it. Um, and believe it or not, the only person after talking to a lot of people in the Bay area and, you know, like a lot Rip of these LL guys. Or something. Steve Dynan himself. Okay. So, so Steve Dynan was the only person who was willing to wrench on this and, and everyone else was just kind of like, you know what, we don't have brass and then you need a dyno to do it right. And it's just not something we're interested in. And so that was like lesson number one, like, holy shit, like carburetors are going extinct, especially from a performance standpoint. Like unless you go to a race shop at Sonoma somewhere, maybe, right. uh, you know, you can find something, but I was also going to be doing some other stuff while I was there. And so, so he did some work there and it came out awesome. Like it was actually Fantastic. Um, if you were between four thousand and seven thousand, maybe no, no, forty five hundred and seven thousand RPM. Sure. Again, high lift cam, big, big uh, dual forty fives on there, and uh, and this is a you know a two liter, and it was just brutal. Like driving around town, it was just so smelly, just dumping gas, and um, <laughs> it was. I gave me a migraine every time I drove it, 
and, but if I'm up in the mountains or if I'm hauling ass, yeah, again, between 4,500 and 7,000, absolutely perfect. Airfield ratios yep. are spot on. Like it, it drove mm. beautifully, but that was again, a big learning experience for me. It's like, yeah, you know, carburetors are compromised, but until you actually go through the motions and then you realize, okay, you have to tune for here, here, here in the power band. And that's all like, you don't, you can't, yep. you know, it's not, it's not fuel injection. Right. <laughs> um, and so anyways, uh, that was a great car. It ended up on Petrolicious. It was cool. It was an awesome build, but ultimately moved it on to a, a buddy of ours, Ryan Turry, who's the mm-hmm. COO of uh, Velocity Invitational. Um, oh, cool. And, yeah, but um, anyways, yeah, from there I've had um, 993 uh, NSX, uh, a pretty built Celica Alltrack, which was a, oh. a, a bucket list for me. Wow. Um, and uh, what did I have? A Z3M Coupe. Um I'm trying to go. Oh yeah, one one of my favorite cars I've ever had, and I've bought and sold multiple times back and forth to uh, Paul Mitchell. Is that Eurospec 500 SEC? Yeah, that you okay. guys have probably seen around. So that was mm-hmm. that's a, that car has a funny story that is a whole podcast on its own. Um, what else have I had? I'm trying to think most more recently. Um, oh well, I have an R33 GTR now um, that mm-hmm. is actually for sale. <laughs> so buy it. Man, I've <laughs> I've I've found myself very recently around an innumerous number of r33 gtrs just in the past month i've i've done photo shoots on three of them no way um uh, yeah midnight purple uh v-spec a white 200 kilometer 200 kilometer v-spec that's uh, mechanically perfect um nice. and then uh, a recent uh, a, a gray pearl uh you know gtr not v-spec but real nice car Sweet. um yeah so I've, I've become i've become very familiar with those cars very cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a lot of fun. And it was, it's in, and a lot of the cars really, I mean, like most people do, right? Like uh, these are bucket list cars for me, right? Sure. I have a, I have a, I have a laundry. I literally have a list on my phone and I, and I'm, you know, scratch, I'm, I'm checking these off, right? It's mm-hmm. like, Hey, like I got to do this, this, and this, you know, I, and, I don't know um, why, but I'm picturing you holding your phone up and then you've got like, like a nail and you're like scratching it off the list, like on, across totally. your screen. That's Just the only way to right do it. And, I just have to, I take it, I, I, I frequent the mall often because I have to swap mm, my screen. I have to, I have to replace the screen um, every, every 10 cars or 20 cars. Yeah. The stop um, by Claire's and like San Rio surprise. And maybe get some earrings, you know, get whatever. a pretzel, you know? Yeah. Sure. Maybe even a Cinnabon. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah. So it's a, that, I'm, I mean, obviously big, big car, dude. I've had over 80 cars. I need to retaliate. it. Um, Rookie numbers. I, it's been a while. Yeah, so Rick, pretty basic bitch. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, you said a nummy. Um, yeah, so well, uh, one thing. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. The cap, cap it off. Cap off the list because I, I wanted, to, I wanted to dovetail that in the. Uh, into Let, yeah, let's cap it off. And so you mentioned the rallies, you know. So um, I'm I'm building a car specifically for rally use. So um, it's sort of kind of like my magnum opus if you will of like JDM and Euro. And I really Ooh. like E30s. I've had a lot of them. I've driven everything from, you know, a, a piece of shit 318i to a Euro spec sport Evo and everything in between. And so um, I'm building an E30 off, uh, it's, it's a 325 IS, it's an mm-hmm. 87 uh, Alpine okay. white black Opera interior, K24 uh, build. And it's a wild oh, yeah. build in terms of the actual engine. It's just cams and breathing mods um, and a tune. It's running off of Condata. Uh, and our boys over at Beeline are are putting it together for me. I'm doing Dope. ground control suspension on it, upgraded brakes, and you know all the stuff. But um, ultimately, though, the goal is to have like a nice, well balanced uh, Canyon Carver, you know. And and the, this setup is going to be about 245 wheel, uh, 8,000 RPM. Plenty. And yeah, That's and killer. about 200 uh, wheel torque. And uh, the nice. the cool thing about that is. The the early cars, especially like mine, the, the first year 87s weigh about 2650 uh, uh, wet. So I'm look I'm like targeting a 2500 pound weight, uh, and you know power to weight is pretty solid there. So again, I'm not drag racing. Everyone always asks if I'm keeping it NA. Yes, I am because I, I don't I'm not drifting. You know, right. so uh, those cars already have like pretty limited traction as it is with that semi trailer uh, uh, semi trailing rear suspension. So that's plenty good. Well, cool because like. You know, what I know we, we kind of wanted to talk about on the whole, you know, me, yourself, Chadwick is we're, we're, we're men of certain age nowadays. Um, I'm not going to ask you your exact age. I, I, do we give a shit? Like, how old are you? I'm going to ask you, fuck it. 40. 
40. Me too. Yeah. Um, Chadwick is 40 plus a couple. 43. And yeah. 43. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And so, you know, dovetailing off of, of all those details you just gave us about, you know, your first car, your, your beloved Regal uh, to um, car from car zero to a car about to be 81 and a half or whatever we got going is, you know, I, you know, something that Chadwick and I have talked about is we's getting old. And, and I mean that in a good way where, you know, when, when we started down this road of our car fandom was there's a lot, shit has changed, right? Like I, you know, when I got into doing car stuff, my first car is a 1965 Plymouth Barracuda and which is very different to what I'm generally playing around with today. And there's an, an innumerous number of things in my youth, my misguided youth, that I thought was like really cool. Like I got my Barracuda. I was like, I'm going to rake this thing. I'm going to put like two inch lift blocks in the back and have this thing just sneaker, sneaker mm-hmm. shaped rake going down the street. And now from beyond insufferable, like I, I couldn't imagine doing that to a car today. And so um, that it makes an excellent dovetail uh, between you know, you, you started with a 2002 and then you'd had a bunch of, you know, Japanese stuff, not JDM necessarily, but like a bunch of Honda stuff. And then you went back Euro again, and and then you just capped it off with a little bit of both, right? Like a, it's a, it's a European car with a, a, a built Honda engine and, and kind of having your cake and eat it too. Um, is there anything like, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, let's start with this. Like, Let's just go, let's go. We'll go around the horn. Like, what's something like that? You know, I just mentioned raked muscle cars, which today is, it sounds terrible in my mind. Is there something that you can just think of off the top of your head from from way back yonder? Um, something that was something you were really into, whether it was a one specific thing or more of like an overarching thing, and that you're not nearly as into or straight up you find cringy today. Chadwick, go for it, dude. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think back in the day and I, I kind of played with a lot of different stuff too. It's just back in the day, it was like the sound, right? Like, and we thought it was cool to have the loudest car. And right now oh I appreciate, I appreciate a great sounding car, but back in the day it was like, sure. This WRX straight pipe sounds awesome. You know, I, you can't beat it. And now I can't even imagine running a car like that as a, as somewhat responsible, you know, adult. Right. Like, so I think, I think it was just to be the loudest and not necessarily the fastest or the nicest, but just making sound for the sake of making sound. It's just that uh, I couldn't even imagine it now. Now I would like these over exaggerated burble tunes on pieces of shit cruising around. It's like, come on, man. You know, that, that for me is it, man. Have either of you guys ever made any like truly regrettable, like exhaust mods to any, any of your guys? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely deleted mufflers. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, um, I've deleted resonators in cars that ended up being super droney, but you know, but it's, but then I, 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 um, I justify it, you know, to myself, it's like, no, nah, dude, but it's only between, you know, 2,500 and 2,700. And then I'm fine around sure. that, but um, it's only between 55 and 75 miles an hour. Exactly. Fine. So my, my, my 993, it was a 97 C2, which is exactly what I wanted. Killer. That's the fact yeah. like, it took me. A few years to find that car i wanted a very specific color and i want i wanted ocean blue metallic with a gray interior and almost all of them have a tan interior mm-hmm. and i just love that sort of like battleship gray with that ocean blue you know it's just such mm-hmm. a great combo and and i wanted lsd and nothing else and of course a manual and because i wanted bare bones because those cars came with like stupid audio systems and like you know they were kind of yeah. laden with a bunch of shit. so yeah. i wanted like the simplest like most like uh, you know basic version of that car and, car edition yeah and um that was awesome i ended up finding it up in oregon but anyways um i put super uh, so i bought it completely stock like it was owned by a doctor by a surgeon in um i think it was in seattle and proctologist. Uh, yeah, a proctologist and uh and so he um uh, traded it in on a new uh at the time shit whatever at the time whatever the new turbo was you know um sure. this is about seven yeah, years ago yeah, oh, so, okay. 991. And, yeah, 991. And so he's he traded it in on that. And what owner car? Um, and um, you know, I picked it up from there, drove it straight home. It was an awesome road trip, uh, and it was completely stock. And then I did like RS suspension, like Eurospec right height. Um, I put Recaro pole positions in it with um 
like Alcantara inserts that match the interior. It was black leather because there are, you know, it's a black dash car and all that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, wheels, tires, whatever. But um, the big one though, uh, it was uh, Torna tornado uh, air intake. Oh, the little Twisty insert. Thing. Yeah. Little you, insert. you put that, I like I'm with that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, you really should tune yeah, for that kind of power though. <laughs> that's true i mean that's i true. i did it was a very around car um and i and, and and you get a little bit of that crossover with those cars so i did there's something called the motor sound package on 993s and so okay. that if you look at the air box um there's a there's basically like a a, a template if you will or like a, a provision for where yeah. it would be cut out cut it. yeah and so and, and on the motor sound package it was hmm. a hole and then it had like the little venturi like a horn thing yeah yeah and uh, and so i replicated that i like actually made it <laughs> myself with like um, a pringles can that you just like cut the bottom out of yeah. and like hot glued yes. it to the not quite but uh it sounded killer but that wasn't the that i made that that was crazy it was i put a super cup exhaust system which is literally a race exhaust and it's mm. not it's it's kind of muffled if you look at it it's basically straight pipes you delete the mufflers and um and it has a little bit of a resonating kind of wall but um it was extremely loud it sounded awesome um and i don't know if you guys splice in other video and audio but i there's a video that lane took of me doing donuts in the middle of nowhere not mexico <laughs> it was just in the middle of nowhere it was on a, um, on a close could, course professional driver. Yeah, of course. and you mm -hmm. can you get to hear what it sounded like, but um, mm -hmm. it sounded really really aggressive. It sounded almost like a like a V eight kind of in some ways, but um, cool. uh, but you know that big flat six, you know, and uh, it was one of those things that I would not do now, um, mm -hmm. but I definitely thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it was extremely loud, and I just tolerated it. Like it, it sometimes it was painful, like when you're on the freeway for a long mm -hmm. time. But it just sounded so awesome that, um, you know, it, now in small doses, I would do it. But here's here's part of being an old man and yes. a respectful old man. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't do it just for the sake of my neighbors, straight up. Like, I, yeah. I, I just, oh, hell yeah. And I live in, on a hill at the top of a hill. So just coming up the hill, it, I, everybody would be so pissed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to be that guy. That's So that's one. Yeah. No, that that's funny. Like, and... I'm very much the same way. It's just like I'm almost I'm almost to the point now where I I don't anticipate myself really doing exhaust unless I'm doing something like your E30 build that you were talking about, where like everything is custom. Mm -hmm. If I bought something that was stock today, I don't I don't know if I'm doing exhaust mods on it. I I, I really don't. Just in general, um, and I don't know if that's like if I'm going full like old man yells at cloud, but like. I don't know. I just, you know, I, I just... you know what though, Frank, I think it really yeah. is like the car, right? Like sure. a 911 can be a little rowdy. Like it's a sporty yeah. car. Uh, my NSX, I had a 93. I ran a pride VFL with a test pipe and it literally was the loudest, but sexiest noise ever. And it made sense because the NSX is a loud looking car. Like it, mm. it just belonged. Plus those things were so neutered sounding from the factory. It was just, yeah, you couldn't hear it at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like for yeah. that, it, you get away with it. Now, if you're a G35 with like a burble tune mm -hmm. and you're burning your exhaust off with a flamethrower, that's a different story. I think the car can sometimes justify that kind of noise, but just making cars loud, right? It's, it's a tough choice. I think it's going to be the right personality for the car. Make cars loud again. Yeah. Like yeah. I, yeah. I definitely think there's something to that. Um, you know what's something I see that like I would have considered in my youth and I see people with this now and I just, I, I audibly roll my eyes is you ever see cars rolling around with a tinted windshield? Yes. I saw one today. Wild. It's like uh, insulting and, to my, yeah, in, at me true. being 40. Like I get like, I get like offended by it when I was like 16, I would be like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Like it keeps it cool. And like, blah, blah, blah. and now it's just like, it, it Do you live in wild. Arizona or something. Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm in the Bay area. Like there's like, it gets triple digits like two days a year. So like, yeah, no, but like, dude, at nighttime, that's got to be like oh, it's just pitch murder. black, right? Yeah, that's brutal. Just, yeah, it feels like so irresponsible as like an you're gonna run, like human being. You're gonna run into the guy that night shaded his brake lights, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's a, and somehow there's a Vanta black car in there in the mix. I don't know. Oh, it's ridiculous. Um, but but you know, dude, I actually, um, I, I mean, uh, controversial. I don't know about you guys, but I actually mm -hmm. don't like tint. Period. Like I, I, I I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm a fishbowl a guy, yeah, like, and yeah. that is one of those things that um, I I used to be more willing to remove tint 
but if if it's nasty, I, I'm over it. Like it's just such a pain in the ass. It's I don't have to time beer glass. You're like trying to like you like scrape the defroster Dude, off. Gun, baby. Just, like, so it still shop. sucks. Yeah. Well, yeah. I actually steam a steamer is 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 the, is the best that I found. So um, I have like a steam wand that I use, and it, I bought it specifically for that purpose. I still have it in the garage, and because uh, it just softens the glue so much more, like in a way that it, with the, what the moisture that it. You know, like I found like heat guns get like really sticky. You know, like everything gets yeah. really sticky. Yeah, it depends. Um, yeah. Yeah. I and I just I didn't have as much success personally when I started when I first tried it. So then I just stuck to the to the the steamer. And um yeah, I mean I've had some brutal ones like um, you know, where you have the especially when you're dealing with the freaking defroster, you know, and like you're just like it's just a mess. So mm -hmm. um I'm a fishbowl guy. Um I, I if it's stock tint, fine, but like you sure. know, if the glass is actually tinted, but like I would I would not apply tint to a car. It's not my thing. No, yeah, I'm 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 the same way. It, it's funny. For a long time, I was like, eh, I just won't tint like the front windows or the windshield. And now in my head, I'm like, I don't want any of it. Like, but like, mm. I get I get a like if I see someone driving with a a tinted windshield, I I get offended. Like it's that bad. Like do you just like a, do you just assault them like, immediately? So you're just like you just jump in front. Yeah, I'm wanted for like yeah. eleven counts of assault and murder. It's <laughs> sexual it's, assault, of course. Oh yeah, man. no, I just yeah that that yeah I'm me and me and me and Diddy. Um, how does that escalation just... happen? By the way, hey, step out of your vehicle. <laughs> I don't like your tinted windshield. I don't like your tint, and then I'm sexually assaulted. I don't like your tint or your. I don't like your tint or your pants. But I like your mouth. Yeah, no, it's um, it's 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 yeah. Suddenly now I'm the monster. We we've come full circle. You are a monster. Yeah, I do have. I I was just gonna say I have another. I mean, in terms of car stuff. Yes, please. This is controversial. Uh, oh boy. all the hot it, takes today it's good you did you did throw this out there um, as a little bit of a primer for me you know like all right what's going on what, what the topic of discussion was today and i yeah, i us being i old. thought of something that uh is controversial because i know i well i know chadwick has one but i don't know if you have a front wheel drive car um i have zero interest in owning a performance oriented front wheel drive car mm. um and i had a all lot that of them. all that i was gonna say all that honda history and you kick them I, all I, of the I, curb i drove a lot of them and like you know it's it, the thing is that okay like I, i've even recently i've considered it as a daily driver like sure whatever mm -hmm. it's just yeah. like you know if i get like a, an appliance you know yeah like a, a jet or i mean a golf all track wagon as like my dog car or you know or not all track i guess a sport wagon sure. like you mm -hmm. know or or even like a Golf GTI or whatever. They're great cars. They drive well for what they are and all that. But I'm just like, it's it's it sucks. I'm like mentally screwed up. I just can't get over it. I'm so like, I, <laughs> I feel like I just, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. So, but um, I still have an unchecked box though. So there's an, there's an exception Ooh, here. Should we guess? Should we guess. guess? I already got it. I already got it. He knows it. I, I feel like it's ITR. But I feel like it's not. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with one that I've owned, and I know Chadwick has owned, but I believe like mine was a dog shit quality version. I'm gonna say a B13 Ser Sentra. Ooh, Interesting. That's a good one. Is this a clean a US, one? A clean, is, nice one. Is this a car that's sold uh, in the US art or not? Yes. Oh, okay. That changes things. Where I was thinking hot hatch. hatch. I was thinking hot hatch in general. Um, I've, well, uh, I've had Corrado, actually, SL, I've, Corrado SLC. I, I've had a Corrado SLC. Uh, I've had a Mark One. I ha, I've had a really, really clean Mark One GTI as well as a Mark Two 16 valve. Mm -hmm. Super nice car. That at the time, I mean, it, I mean, I'll show you guys pictures. It was absolutely impeccable. And I think mm. I sold it for forty five hundred bucks, maybe about twelve <laughs> oh, no. years ago. No, no about four, maybe fifteen years ago. Now. Yeah, fifteen years ago. Um, I sold it for forty five hundred bucks. And easily that car is now it's, worth it's like 35 24. or 40 yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> don't play <laughs> that like game. Ridiculous. We don't play that game. Uh, I know, right? Yeah, we're all in that. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, what you got, Chadwick? You know, I don't know. Now now I'm kind of misled here. So it's front wheel drive. I don't know if it's something more modern, like a, maybe something like a Fiesta ST or something along that vein. Oh, I got, I, got, I got a thought. Wait, no, you said it was sold in North America. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Never mind. No well, Q-shows. I have to stay. Uh, I've have driven the 205 uh, 16. They're cool. Uh, they're, cool. yeah. Um, 
Mr. Harrington the Fourth nailed That's it. Me. But I think it's oh, because shit. he's an I think he's an avid listener of Driving While Awesome, though, so he knows that I've talked about. It. I mean, I, 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 you, <laughs> should, should I sell myself out and say that I'm not an avid listener? And I, no, I, oh, I, you I, bastard! I, I know, I, you. I know. I'm selling myself despite you. despite the sweatshirt I, I wore from today's event. Offensive. Events. He's wearing a Driving While Awesome shirt, uh, sweatshirt, yeah. um, and so I do yeah, listen is, quite often. So thanks, Art. I missed it. But B13, <laughs> we we both own B13 SERs, and I saw a really clean one in the city yesterday, and it blew me away. Um, I almost, we, we've got the quiz ad, uh, game to play late, uh, later on in the pod. And I almost picked a B13 SER. Damn, ad. I would um, love to, but it was too, I, I it wanna, was too like, obvious. I want to hear it even, even, I mean, just, you should just read it regardless. I, I'm curious to see how they marketed it in period because um, it was a racy little car, you know, LSD that they call it a sedan. Car. The whole ad, oh, they yeah, multiply call thing. it a sedan. Wow. Which, well, it's because they call the 510 a sedan, right? So that's yeah. sort of its predecessor. It's because it's basically if there's a pillar, there was a time where if, like there was a B, uh, three box with a B pillar, it was a sedan. If it was not a B pillar, it was a coupe. I don't know. It, it, well, they, they had they played, sedan. They played, Most they of the Sentras were sedans, the B13. So that might right. be. Yeah. Well, I think it has to guy. do with the back. It's actually the C pillar and the roof line, right? So it's right. like, mm. it, or it, it's because, I mean, most cars have a B pillar. So it's that. It's that box on the that third box, if you will, that really ultimately yeah. determines and then that. I, but... I think a super technically, like the the textbook definition is like the distance between, like the seat bottom and the rear axle, like center line. It's a, it's it's super obscure and like nobody mm. gives a shit. And that's why, why don't you magazine. Know the formula, dude, what the fuck? What kind of it's like is yeah, sto- stoichiometric, <laughs> but for coupes, I don't know. It's it's, it's complicated. Grand um, Coupe has something to argue with that uh, definition. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's CLS. Um, yeah, I think um, you know that those are great. Yeah, great guess. I mean, the S thirteen or sorry, the um, B thirteen SDRs are super cool. I I almost bought one, and so. When I was in college, I test drove one, um, and Hushy Pushy Matt, who's a friend of ours, mm-hmm. um, he went with me, and he'll remember this car. It was a white one, really nice car, and it had a UKDM SR20DE, so it was oh. a higher compression motor, uh, and it drove great and everything, but we just could not get down to a price that I was happy with, mm-hmm. and the thing is that it was super annoying to me because I was you know, a broke college kid and the dude was a, a, a heart surgeon at Stanford and, and, and he had <laughs> the owned dichotomy. the car. Dude, and he had owned the car since new and he swapped that motor into it when he blew the head gasket on the other car and warped the head. I mean, mm. I'm sorry, on the original Damn. motor. Yeah. And so he found a UKDM motor on eBay and put that in there. And so, and, and I was just like, dude, like you could make up the difference that we're, we're, we're you know, let's say we're 700 yeah, bucks You were apart. three like, hours of overtime. That... Exactly, exactly. And, uh, I know what and I got, we... bro. I know what yeah, I got. And so it was unfortunate. Yeah, so I, I didn't get that car, but that was as close mm. as I got. I really like them. I think they're step, I mean, they're still pretty undervalued and kind of underappreciated. Um, although there's when some you outliers out there. Can't find like, them. They don't, they don't, ex- a clean stock one doesn't exist. No. Yeah, they're rare there's like as hell. four. Yeah, I like the the uh, M, uh, Mexico DM stuff, you know, with the cool headlights. Yeah, the, was it the, su- the, the Suru? Suru, the, Suru. The, yeah, yeah. Suru, Suru, yeah. Um, but yeah, you you nailed it. ITR, yeah. So the ITR, hmm. um, because I had a, a DC2 GSR and I also had a DB2, uh, and um, you know, the DC2 GSR is such a great car. Um, they're they're great, and I did all of the ITR stuff to it, but yeah. I, you know, I didn't, I couldn't afford an ITR, you know, so. Um, and it had like basically the, the subframe reinforcement with the bigger sway bar and like mm-hmm. all the all suspension and and as you know the, the ITR is like seam welded, welded from up. the factory yeah. Yeah. And, and it's got way more material in the rear like it's just like it's a it's a different car you know so yeah. um, it's still a, an unchecked box um, I have a feeling that I'll probably like it and drive it for a while and then sell it as usual but like it's not a car that I would necessarily want to keep in my fleet forever but um, mm. I was I you know about maybe five years ago now i was seriously considering getting one i'm like all right i should do it now because they were starting to blow up yeah and um one of my really good friends who haven't i mean i haven't really kept in touch with them outside of social media now but he has a shop in san francisco mm-hmm. and we used to do you know honda shit together back in the day and i i reached out to him like hey dude i'm really seriously considering getting an itr are they still getting stolen left and right and he said yes and i'm like Damn. shit i'm out i don't want to deal with it like i'm a fucking grown-ass man <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to drive. Like, I have kids. I, you know, like I don't want some clowns fucking following me home, breaking into my garage. Like, I, I don't want right. to deal with that shit. Yeah. So, so I just decided against it. Um, and, um, you know, it's one of those cars. Apparently, still to this day, it's a uh, you know, is um, as Jay Leno calls it, it's an A to A car, right? It's like you just 
you yeah. drive it and then you just come back and park it <laughs> you know like yeah it's a bummer and that's, and that's the thing it's just like i know we talked about chadwick and i talked about it a little bit last episode it was just like being having cars that are truly usable right mm -hmm. like you can go out and take take it for a day or two or three or four or whatever and just just use it without i mean that's kind of an extreme case of like of, of worried about it getting jacked but more like we were talking about like like you don't worry about like it gets a rock chip or you add some miles in the odometer like those are yeah. things that like it's it's a it's a good luxury to not have to worry about um why don't we do this before we before we jump on to um quizzing all over each other is what about like i know like 16 year old me with 40 year old me's thank god you said me budget. <laughs> i know 16, 16 year old and i, I know like, 16 year old in general well, like, i'm not allowed to say olds. that i'm not allowed to say that because <laughs> i, I live them. directly next to a high school like right here is a high school so yeah, i don't right. want to get yeah. evicted from my own house <laughs> um uh, megan's law is a uh, thing how many tinted wind front windshields tinted front windshields because you can be I would, stack them. I would actually <laughs> stack them um <laughs> they're all pedophiles that's what it means <laughs> exactly it. yes um, speaking of Jared Fogel, um, what, what would 16 with, okay, you're 16, <laughs> you have, you have, 16 your, inches? you have your today's, no, 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 Dirk Jared Dig Dirk Diggler, you're Dirk Diggler, you're Dirk Diggler yeah. in 1979, <laughs> no, um, Still you have, mm. you have 40 year old arts budget, but you are 16 yeah. year old art. Interesting. What, what are you shopping for? Ooh. In a car, in a, in a motor vehicle. Well, at the time, this would make sense just based on where my mind was. Uh, that's, BMW that's what I want, BMW 2002 Turbo. Mm. Ooh, like fact, like 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 in period like factory the, like proper. The real the one. Turbo. Yeah, yeah. And and, yeah. I, and I, at the time, you know, like I I could absolutely afford one. Not anymore. Now they're you know whatever sure. deep into the six figures. Um, yeah. And, uh, and at the time, just knowing myself, again, I'm putting myself in that mindset, you know, like mm -hmm. what I wanted. And again, I was obsessed with 2002s uh, and that was like the pinnacle for me. Um, you know, outside of that, it, it was going to be like roof stuff or 993 Turbo S, which I couldn't afford right. probably. So, right. Um, but like, but yeah. yeah, but that was, that was what the want would have been. That would have been it. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think I'm like scanning. Yeah. Cause I, I might, and how much, like, how much of that want, how much of that want then is different than the, than the want now. Like, I feel like those are things that you would desperately want today, but are, are was there anything from back then? You were like, Ooh, I really want this. And, and maybe you want nothing to do with that now, or is it everything, everything tracks, like everything that you want, no. is what you want now, because that's part of it. That's yeah. part of it too. Right. Like, yeah, but people in their 30s and 40s now are coming into money, and now they're all buying stuff that they wanted when they were in high school. Um, but is there any of that that you wanted then that you don't want now, or or is that does that rule reign true? Yeah, I mean, you know what's funny is that no, it is definitely a line because I, I um, there's definitely a lot of that, and that and but there's also but you know, itr I wanted in high school, right? Um, and I wanted. You know, I was I was super into JDM stuff too. So I used to go like to when I was when I would go to San Francisco, I would go to Kino Kunia bookstore and get like the <laughs> Japanese magazines and see all the D option shit and all the, or whatever it was, you know, back in the day. Um, but here's one that is controversial again, maybe. Huh? Ooh, hot take. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's so it's a car that um I definitely wanted in high school and obviously are extremely popular now and very valuable but mark four i don't really care to own one and it's a mark four super um, you and i are 40 and and yeah. and and chadwick is 40 plus a plus a handful so that was that was my that was exact yeah that was my exact poster and then i remember in i remember i think i was like a sophomore in high school i graduated in 2002 and i i, I believe i was a sophomore in high school and figuring out how, like, if I worked really hard and I saved up some money and I like, I like took out a loan from my parents and did all the things that I could have bought a then like high mile manual Supra turbo. Mm -hmm. at, and at the time, this would have been just before Fast and Furious came out. That's like the mm -hmm. line of demarcation of, of when the value started getting crazy on those and they haven't stopped. I can get one for like 15K. And high yeah. mile then was like 80,000 miles. Oh, yeah. Right. 
um, and being like, boy, that's a lot of money. But I think if I do this and that, and like, and I, I, I sell a kidney and like, I can do this and I can maybe find a really good deal on one and talk them down. They're asking 15. I can talk them down to 13, five. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that was almost possible. And then fast and furious came out and then the, that, that 15 K turned into 30. And now it's, now it's 130 for like, uh, like a high mile driver. Yep. So it, it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. How about yeah. Chadwick? How about you, man? You, you got anything in your stuck in your craw, that 16 year old, 16 year old, oh, you, whether, whether there's a big change in opinion or not, you know, I, we've still... already got the poster child down at the, the Mark four. Yeah. Right. Right. No, I've, I, you know what I've always, I grew up around, uh, I grew up kind of in the boonies. So we, muscle cars were the thing growing up. I've always wanted to get my yep. hand on something really good. Uh, like a really good Nova or even something weirder. I kind of like the weird stuff, like a duster. I'd love to do a duster over and like, just make it kind of cool. Old Omega. Yeah. Something, something. No AMX. I, I think I'd be down with that, but just, I've always had that in the back of my head. I always thought muscle cars were super cool. And then, you know, obviously when we got into more, uh, you know, at the timeline, you guys were talking about the Mark four supers were like 15 K I was in the military. We had ex- totally hundred percent expendable income. Right. So a lot of my friends bought that shit. I would have personally died if I owned a Mark four super at age 18 or 19, <laughs> just to be completely <laughs> clear the way I drive. So, um, I saw a lot of that stuff come and go. And that's really what I got into the Japanese stuff and muscle cars kind of went to the back burner. And now like muscle cars are weird. They're in a weird space right now. Cause you can, it's the, the yeah. want isn't out there, right? They're not fetching like 80 grand for like a kind of done over like Chevelle. You can actually find a decent one for like 40 or build your own, which I'd probably do. I kind of want to go back. I want to revisit that and yeah. do a muscle car. Plus this eighties and nineties shit I work on is like the hybrid of the worst technologies, right? I'm dealing with vacuum shit, basic sensors. And like, I want to go back to muscle cars where it's just goddamn simple, you know, give back, me some, back, give me to, back to arts nightmare of carburetors. Yeah. I'll yeah, take it. I mean, I'll take a carburetor. You know, that's, no, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, um, you know, I was definitely way more into uh, um, muscle cars back then, um, even though I didn't necessarily want to own one. But my dad was it was, you know, that he was an influence and, you know, and he had like a Hemi Cuda back in the day. And like, but he was yeah. also super into Dawson's. Um, and like to this day, I, I still lust after like a 69 Z28, like like oh, Trans Am style build. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that would be like if I. You know, if I was loaded enough, like, and if I was going to have a six car garage, I would absolutely have that in there. And I would do like, you know, the mini lights with like the Avons and like, you know, just, yeah. just like a badass like road course racer. Like, I think that, like, yeah, I mean, they're so cool. I, I think they're rad, but I mean, I would definitely go with a, a fuel injection. No, one thing I was going to say, uh, I just learned that there's such a thing as micro skirt, by the way, which I think is great. Oh, hey, um, you know, it, which is what they call you, right? I think that is, uh, yeah, uh, it's. That's why that's why I only have one kid. Um, no, but real quick, so really concentrated. Question, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very, very it's exactly yeah. you have to um, chew, but you know, anyways. Oh my gosh, it's uh, chunky, is what you're saying. Um, but anyways, um Curdled. so so here's the thing that going back to this though, it's kind of a weird sort of catch twenty two situation because if I had the money that I have now, going back to my sixteen year old self. At mm-hmm. the time, I would get a BMW 2002 Turbo because I know because I was obsessed with them. Yes. But now I have no interest in a BMW 2002 Turbo. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's like because we are because yeah because we're old ass men. Right. Yeah, but I mean, like I, I think it's just it, I just understanding what it is and like what I could build instead of that and all that and like it's just I I still think it's an awesome package and historically uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, it's just not a car that I would necessarily want to own. Yeah, Speaking and, of, and that, oh, man, and I was I, gonna say before before we jump into the the quiz, that 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 was gonna be the one thing. Like if if I was sixteen year old me, with twenty twenty four money, um, it'd be muscle car. It would be a. I mean, I had my sixty five Barracuda, the second gen Barracuda, that sixty seven to sixty nine with a three forty, uh, Formula S. It'd be it'd be muscle car stuff. Um, and I I too would like to go back to that one day. Um, but yeah, dude, that's speak- that, that's pretty much it. Speaking of 2024 money, to take it back to Art, what he currently has, uh, if we weren't in the, me and my wife right now, we each, we own separate houses. We're about to sell and consolidate into one nicer house. If we weren't in that situation right now, Art, my wife was like, can you please give him an honest offer on that R33? Because she wants that car (laughs) so bad. No way. 
Uh, yeah, no, no shit. And I would love, I would love to house that, but we are literally months away from, you know, consolidating and buying a big house. So we're like freezing everything. So I just want to yeah, put well, that out there. Yeah. 20, if we went back to 2023 money, we'd be, we'd be serious. 2023 money. It's yeah. Um, that's funny, man. Well, I appreciate it. Um, ironically, um, you know, I bought a place, uh, you know, we moved to Santa Barbara and, you know, um, it would be very helpful if I sold my skyline uh, because I have a very nice big house in Santa mm -hmm. Barbara now. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just one of these situations where financially it makes sense to move some money around and I'm getting yep. set. I'm basically sort of um, preparing for a refi. And so, and you know, without getting too into the weeds with finance finances, if you have a yep. lot of cash in your portfolio, it really helps bring down that interest rate. So sure um, that's one of the reasons that I'm doing it. And so, um, it's just funny because, you know, especially from our listener base, like, you know, on the Drive Well Awesome side, like people are like, how could you sell your dream car? Oh, how no. dare totally you? I'm personally totally offended. Yeah. And you let me down. And it's like, hey, man, I have other stuff in life going on that. It, I mean, <laughs> I know that this is the this is what you know about me. I'm, I know you. You're my, there's this outlet that I'm like, I'm like the mm -hmm. car person in your life. But like, I also, uh, you know, I have a family. I love to travel. I like. Food, you I eat like and you artists. breathe and you occasionally sleep. You have to pay monster. taxes and all that kind of stuff. But um, no, thanks, man. I mean, yeah, it's 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 still out. It's still for sale. Um, you know, it's it's. I have it consigned with the guys at Top Rank, uh, yep. and it's just cool. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I have it. There is a, a a finite amount of time that they're going to have it for that we're going to try out, and then um, we'll see. Maybe it'll end up on on, on some auction platform. Perhaps. Which, yeah, yeah perhaps. perhaps. I'm not allowed but... to name it because they haven't sponsored this podcast just yet. But, oh, there you go. Um, yeah. No, I can't. She did, but it, she did say to lowball you once we finished the podcast. Dude, so yeah, just <laughs> teary bullshit. You're gonna run She's this like thing with a twenty-eight thousand dollar reserve. Yeah. No, um, forty k. No, that right that's that's yeah. It's it's I don't know. It's fun. Those cars are cool. And uh, and Very yeah, cool. Chadwick, you should uh, you should no. throw caution in the okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, why don't we do uh, something that we love? to do on this podcast um and and art i know you've participated in this once when we were uh -huh. uh, on well when, when we were on your oh, podcast right. i believe you you picked that's you guys right. uh you and the crew over there the dwa uh consortium uh sniffed out the acura vigor if i remember mm -hmm. correctly that's right he's been so, flowered all right so why don't we do this chadwick why don't you tell the people what what we're doing today and tell uh refresh art on the rules and regulations of this while I dig myself up and ourselves up an ad. Yeah. So uh, what Frank is about to unleash upon us, our listeners know very well, is our automotive print ad quiz game show where he reads through a periodical, pulls a car ad. It's going to be 80s, 90s, up to the mid 2000s in nature. He's going to read through it. He's going to redact anything that gives it away, make, model, anything obvious, any like special terms. I sometimes still say it because I don't give a fuck, but we're going to get three guesses. Well, in this case, Art's going to get three guesses to figure out what the hell Frank's yammering on about. Every time he fails, he can ask for a hint. I will be a lifeline in this one. I have no idea what Frank is going to unleash upon us. So Art, if you need it, man, let me know. Uh, we do some pretty shitty cars. So that's kind of my subject matter expert area, but uh, you, can, you can call me in, phone a friend, but you, you do have the three guesses in only 10 minutes. And that saves us from going, um, off for like 30 minutes. So uh, I like Frank, it. So, so we're going to do a Mitsubishi Cordia. Is that what we're going to do? Is it that? Obscure? It might be a, it might be a, 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 a precise or, or, or something like that. Okay. So here we go. Lay it hey, on this this is a one pager. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting layout. The left, like two thirds of it, is a a, a portrait style image of the vehicle, and the, hmm. uh, just above it. Uh, so, and then the right hand is text, and but then just above the image on that left two thirds is it says introducing the blank. The competitive edge is now a curve, and I'm going to read it. It's a little blurry, so if I if I stumble here, just bear with me. But there is a hint of history in these graceful, flowing lines. History in the making. As the curve makes a comeback, and the competitive edge takes a classic turn. Inside, softly gathered leather and hand-worked walnut. A standard CD player, dual airbags, and an air conditioning system that's ozone safe. Handling the road's curves, no surprise, you discover a driver's car with a 3.0 liter, 210 horsepower V6 engine, electronically controlled four-speed automatic overdrive transmission, 
and anti-lock brakes. For those who prefer tighter handling and a firmer ride, there's the Blank Touring Package. With advanced four-wheel steering, performance alloy wheels and tires, and a rear deck lid spoiler. All of this and many exclusive blank ownership privileges, including 24-hour roadside assistance program, the blank personal luxury sedan. Finally, someone understands what you've always wanted in a luxury car. Everything. Interesting. So the first hint is R134, right? Ozone safe. It's not an R12 car. That that That's might that might that might help you nail that might and so that, that was it, not a not hint, and I don't remember when the hell that was right. That was it was some point in the nineties. Do you know Chadwick Lifeline? <laughs> oh, I don't know if oh, you want to use me. I, yeah. I don't think you want to burn your Lifeline for that. You get <laughs> I think you get the one phone a friend. It's uh, I it's, think you're uh, spitting facts. I think you're spitting facts. I'm spitting I'll facts. Yeah, I'm spitting, spitting facts. facts. Am I for real? For real? For reals? Trial. Trial TV. Four wheel steering is interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Three liter, two hundred ten horsepower V six. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Because my mind controlled initially, four speed auto. Yeah, initially my mind went to a four door sports car, but that feel this this is later. I feel because uh, I was thinking Maxima, but um, I don't recall those having four wheel sphere. Um, and I don't remember the displacement, but I do know it was a V six, and it was right around that amount of horsepower. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Deck lid spoiler. Correct. Yes. Uh, with with the um, with those um, who prefer the uh, tighter handling and firmer ride, uh, the, uh, the 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 said touring package, you get the deck lid spoiler, four wheel steering, performance alloys, and tires, and a firmer mm. ride. How are you feeling, Chad? Do you have? Do you think you have this nailed? I'm, I'm just, just yeah, your name. On the- uh, <laughs> I think I'm pretty close. I think I'm real damn close. Personal luxury sedan. Finally, mm-hmm. yeah, someone yeah. understands what you've always wanted in a luxury car. Everything. Shit, who was doing four wheel steer besides? So it was Mitsubishi and Nissan. Um. And I'm, uh, way later, you know, you had a, a lot of different people doing it, but I'm just trying to think early on. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Does a Mitsubishi Diamante have four wheel steer? This is me being stoic. <laughs> you're doing a great job. Dad looks like, no, you're going further away. You're going <laughs> <can't see> anything, <laughs> man. A big fan of the Diamante on the pod. I fucking love word. the first gen Diamante. Mm. Um, Sorry, I'm scanning. I'm, I'm going sedans, personal luxury. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Hmm. Oh, we've lo- we've lost your audio there, uh, Art. We can't hear you. Hey. Yeah. Chadwick, can I hear you? I can hear you just fine. Okay, good. I think it's nada. his ear- nada. Nope. Did your ear- your earbuds go to sleep? His non Apple AirPods have failed. Yeah. Beep doop. It's okay. It's okay. Ah, we have the technology. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, with with lifelines, what are we allowed to ask? Oh, we're back, and we're back. Okay, yeah. let me uh, let me try and try and clear us up on here. So we're, we're, we'll we'll cut that. Anyways, you were saying. It's- it has to be a specific question. How how do how do lifelines work? I haven't been on here before. So. Have you considered um? Well, uh, have you considered uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, I am familiar with said show. Yeah. So uh, you would be like, uh, you know, Chadwick, what is your guess on on this car? But I would save that till maybe the end because you've got you've got uh, or at least a second guess. You've got three guesses to figure this out. Okay. All right. Yeah, I feel like I'm a rules. solid solid ninety to 94 percent on this one. Oh, awesome okay mm. all right also uh, the year <laughs> oh shit, i was gonna say that motherfucker. <laughs> what did you say i i had the year <laughs> i had the year i too. said is that is that also the year range he confirmed the year to 94 <laughs> hmm. damn dude I'm, I'm, the best I'm... thing to do art is like my my humble advice is to take a stab and then like ask frank for some clarification and guide us in 
Gotcha. Yeah. Cause that, yeah. Taking a stab will reduce some of the options. Right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. I'm just thinking that I'm stuck on this rear wheel steer and I'm like, fuck, what the hell had this like back then? I mean, cause I mean, a Mitsubishi 3000 GT is not a sedan. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, so what sedan, um, and then that year range. I will tell you this: it is not sedan the way that the B13 uh, Sentra SER uh, qualified sedan. This has four doors. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, You're welcome. Hold on. All right. How many minutes do I have? <laughs> uh, we'll redact one out for audio uh, situation. So let's. Uh, you, you got like five. Five. All right. You got three guesses to play with. I take a shotty shot. Shoot from the hip. All right, let's go Mitsubishi Diamante for now. I love that this is not the Mitsubishi Diamante. I will tell you, and this is not going to be a particularly big hint, but mm. you have you have the nation of origin correct. Okay. This is a Jap this is a, a product from a Japanese manufacturer. Um and there's a bunch of manufacturers you didn't mention while talking about this earlier. This is one that you have mentioned while discussing this. Have uh, okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, because my mind was starting to go to infinity now. But said, wait, so I did mention the manufacturer confirmed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm going to read another, I'm going to read the first, the, the first little snippet paragraph again, because I do think that it actually, if you like through the mind's eye, you might be able to, it, it's a bit of a hint here. <laughs> There's a hint of history in these graceful flowing lines, yeah. history in the making as the curve makes a comeback and the competitive edge takes a classic turn. Is curve all caps in this one, Frank? Because it, it should no. be, it no. should be. Okay, interesting. So now I'm thinking Infinity J30, and I'll use that as my answer. My answer, but I don't think they had a rear a rear wheel steer on those. That, but that's a very curvaceous car with that slope back. Before you confirm that, Frank, that's my guess as well. J30. Are right, you got a year? What year specifically? Oh shit! You guys got, got to do years. Bonus points. Uh, ballpark. I mean, there was one generation of that car, effectively. Oh, so. What well, wasn't there a 93 song about it or something? So um, I'll go with 93. Are you going like 93 till infinity? Is that what you're going? Till infinity, yeah. That's uh, the mighty souls of mischief. Oh <laughs> boy. Yes, yes, that's what I was. Uh, okay. The J30 personal luxury sedan. Finally, someone sure. understands what you're always wanted in a luxury car. It is. It is the Boys. infinity J30. And if you got the J30T, but only for the first few years. Yep that came with four wheel steering. They yeah. they later eliminated the 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 four wheel steering component of it because it was the 90s and in, Nissan was hurting for cash and so they eliminated that component of it. But the first I think like 90 what 90 was it like 92 93 94 I think. Yep. On the J30 the first few years you can that the J30T came with four wheel steering. The T, the T on Infinity products is like very serious because it's touring, but like a lot of cars got a limited slip with that package. It wasn't just a yeah, trim. like the G20. It was, it was like legit, yeah. Oh, right. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm gonna see if I can share this here. Uh, that's so funny. So, um, well, thanks for the, the. I think the curb piece really helped. It's yeah, so much it curve. was. It, it's it's it's. <laughs> Too much curve. My last, my last hint, my last hint was going to be Infinity just recently blatantly ripped Missy this Link. off for a um oh yeah for a uh, so curvy. You, know, you can't an, even an tell an it's EV, that curvy. An EV sedan. Yeah, the image actually this doesn't undersell like the curvature. They didn't yeah, want to show fine. that it looks like a droopy ass like a wiener mobile, like a freaking jelly bean. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're kind of cool though, and they're they really are kind of cool, cool too, right? <laughs> it's a trip. Um. Yeah. Um. I actually was thinking about them recently because. Um, like, you know, what is that new, um, it's a Hyundai. That's what I was saying. The, the Hyundai, um, did I say infinity earlier? I meant, so yeah, the new Hyundai, uh, was it the Ionic six? I was Ionic six. It up. The yeah. Ionic six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a blatant rip off of that For or sure. not, I yeah, mean, yeah, whatever, yeah. but yeah, it's, it totally feels like that. it. I Ford, Ford Contour too. Did that for a little bit, that style. Kind oh, of. Yeah, Where the yeah. ass kind of melted. Really, as much as like a as a not not as not much. nearly as much. But yeah, I I would do inappropriate things for a contour SVT, but that's that's a that's a interesting. They're different. out there. 
I mean, but like like the B thirteen, I mean, you know, find one intact and you know, all of that, you know, finding also B B thirteen's a better car, let's be real. Oh, I bet. Yeah. 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 Um, but it doesn't the contour also have the really cool intake manifold, like the Yamaha style. Yeah, uh, kinda. Yeah, the, the yeah. gaggle of snakes style. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I didn't do as bad as I thought. I was like, um, although um, you know, how how many of your guests nail it on the first try? The first try? Oh boy, mm. I don't know. We're not guest heavy here, and I I honestly don't know if we keep we keep like uh, um, what what do you call it's uh, the 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 company I, that does all the stats. I do keep track of how many guesses it oh, yeah. takes uh, with each. True, guess. but like, but for only, but, didn't for know only but for only um for only our guests, yeah, I don't know if we've got like a saber I could parse the data. The... Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, but yeah. Well that. done. Well done art and so how we normally yeah, close dude, close this it. thing out is um have you have you ever done pcp um no i have not wow well we do pcp weekly here wow. and when we say pcp <laughs> it's project wow. car progress so wow. we discuss the progress that we make on our various project cars mine is usually almost none and chadwick's is usually a lot but still not enough mm -hmm. um let's lead off with our guest uh Ar Ar Artemis Prime, what what do you norm what what are you wrenching on or 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 subletting out to be yeah. wrenched upon? Um, what are your project cars? What kind of progress have you made lately? Yeah, so um, I'll throw this one in here because it wasn't announced on this show, and you guys mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't have known otherwise. But I Ooh, my daily my news. personal daily driver is um, an E fifty three X five four point six IS mm -hmm. killer. And it's an Estoril blue with a Alcantara sports heat interior, which apparently they made a hundred of with the wow. combination. Damn, yeah. that's a Corvette number. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it does have all the ashtrays. No, uh, the polished wheels. And uh, it's it's a you know it's a solid daily you know outside of the fact that you know they're complex. Nine cars. miles a gallon. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's got very terrible fuel economy. Um, but um, uh, a few weeks ago, I was driving it um, back home from some car family stuff, and um, as I was leaving uh the freeway uh -oh. um, i got a flash of a because you know my obc works beautifully everything works on the car actually. all the pixels mm -hmm. and everything? everything wow all my pixels my sls works which is the self-leveling rear suspension um unbelievable works all the window regulators work um what? mount up <laughs> and uh front and rear heated seats work um but um and, and also my uh parking distance uh sensors or whatever P wow them. pdcc all they all work. Um, but um, so I, was, I, I, you know, I get a little a flash on the dash, uh, check coolant level. I'm like, what the hell? And, um, and so I, I'm literally leaving the freeway as this is coming on to a stop sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden I get steam coming out from under the hood. I'm like, holy shit. Rut row. Uh, and and yeah. if, if anyone that's familiar with these cars, uh, this is these have the, uh, the famous valley pan gasket failure, which is mm. basically... You know, it's a something like a twenty-hour job to do. It's like this super, good. super gnarly gasket that sits underneath the intake manifold between the valley of cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, between the heads rather, and uh, coolant gets everywhere and it's a disaster. So I nice. thought, easily, that's it. Here we go, yep. big deal. Uh, and the first thing that you, that I've done, you know, owning a lot of cars, and as you guys know, is uh, you know when you, when your car starts to overheat. At this point, the the temperature gauge hadn't really moved, but I I turned on my heater full. Crank back. it, baby. Yep, and uh, it made it way worse. Like I was getting like a shit ton of steam coming out from the engine um, bay. And Heater almost, hose, um, almost there. <laughs> and so, um, park. I, I found a spot to park the car. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get to it right away. I had stuff to do, and I'm like, all right, I need to find a spot to leave it overnight. So I had a tow to a shop here in town, and I get a call right away. They're like, yeah, it was the heater hose that goes, you know, the hey. valve. Uh, by the firewall there and so that i was basically just shooting all the coolant out <laughs> so, so do those do those have a valve on the engine bay side of the firewall and so when you hit yes. the valve if you turn it on you hit the valve and it it's like a diverter valve right 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 correctly. right yeah 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 like um, with like is it like a straight up cable or it's probably bmw it's probably like 11 it, i know it's on the engine side uh because there's vacuum cool. actuators yeah. yeah. And so, um, but yeah, it, it was, a, it was a relatively, you know, easy fix. It was a thousand dollar repair, but you know, it was like, <laughs> sure. at least the part was readily available and that they didn't have to disassemble my engine. So, um, and I had, you know, while it was, I did a, some while you're in there's, you know, I get sure. fluids, I had new, uh, uh, brake fluid flush and stuff like that. But so it's got uh, a new, uh, heater hose. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, it went from a down date to uh, an update, but, um, that's that. And then, uh, yeah, that's just my daily right now. Um, and I 
have the E30, which is um, currently uh, under the knife and trying to get it on the next Driving All Awesome Rally. So the guys over at Eli, what a hustle! They're yeah. hustling, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're like three ish weeks away, and they're all in right now. Um, actually, I guess it's a month away now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's about a month away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, it's like, yeah, like an hour short of a month. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's just to give you guys a sense of where things are. So the K24 is in the engine. Uh, it's bolted up. The to engine's the in the engine. Is it grounded to the ground? It's it's it's, it's literally like yeah. I, hey, bro, I, I heard you like engines, so I put it. <laughs> um, it's like, uh, the K24. Thanks, X to the Z. Yes. Yeah, it's in the engine bay, bolted up to the transmission. Um, and nice. oh, one of the things I did is I, I changed the steering rack to a Z3 steering rack, the 1.5. Oh, rack, killer. Which okay, is yeah. a significantly quicker ratio. It'll tell you. Um, and um, so that's in there, but it doesn't have an intake manifold on it. They just put fresh new cams in it that haven't been broken in. It doesn't oh, have, the, I mean, I have all the parts there, but none of the stuff was on it <laughs> as of last Tuesday, which is a few days ago. Um, no intake manifold, no intake, no exhaust system. The exhaust manifold's off. Um, the exhaust doesn't exist, period, by the way. Like, they, it's like yeah. Nick fabricated. Um, yeah. And the suspension is like still uh, about TBD. And um, what else is missing? I don't know. Like the whole uh, harness needs to be redone. So um, quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, but you know, you got a backup plan. Uh, backup plan is if my Skyline doesn't sell, tier one backup is I'll drive my Skyline again. I've taken it on several rallies. Uh, and then the other option is Turo. So um, I'm just gonna. <laughs> um, although, how about how about this? If if I haven't sold my little green 924 by then, don't do it, Art. It could be your backup. <laughs> It could be your backup. It's a trusty steed. Trusty. It would work. Yeah. Um, Which part was tr uh, the more untrue part? The trusty or the steed reference? Both. Well, steed is <laughs> in Stuttgart. It's got. The yeah, it's on there. It's on there. We got a steed. <laughs> and it's 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 <laughs> stretching it. Stretching it. Got it on the shield. Yeah. On the yeah. crest. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it for now. Um, you know, obvious. And as I mentioned, my Skyline's for sale. And I, I, I don't intend on doing anything to it but if it, for whatever reason i decide to keep it um you know i did have a couple small items that i wanted to change and do stuff with so one of them being um that it's got um a very modern looking stereo deck in there that i don't like and i wanted to find something that's like fitting of the era and then do 90s like, like mini disc yeah, like a, red, a Bluetooth retrofit specifically, uh, because, you know, it's it, I drove the car enough that I wanted that in the car. Um, and then the other one is a little bit bigger, but um, it's current. It sits on a Nismo S-Tune suspension, which is, um, mm -hmm. you know, springs and shocks, but the dampers are adjustable, but the sh but it's just regular static springs. So I Got really it. wanted to lower the front a little bit like um Currently, it's very functional. Like it's definitely lower than stock by like about an inch and a half all around. But mm. um, you know, naturally, with the most cars, you know, the front wheel arch is way higher than the rear one, and so it looks like the nose is up. And like just yeah. dropping the front end like an inch and a half would would make it look so much better. And oh, yeah, um, yes, it does have a big ass front lip that is going to be much closer to the ground. But you know, I'll right. deal with that. Rally problems. But, um, but yeah, so that's one thing. So I was looking at uh, like coilover suspension and like, there's some options out there and like Olin's aren't super expensive for that car. Um, cool. so I was looking at going that route, but few, uh, potential, uh, PCP, but not, not there you go. Mm. Potential PCP is still PCP in our book. PCP. Yeah. You're right. That's right. So I'll, I'll go next because I, I want to double back on the preparing for a, uh, a bit of a rally scenario. Um, I, I, I've thrown my name into the hat and I have signed up for the, the next, uh, DWA classic OG, whatever we're calling it rally. And I signed up for a car, car that I've only driven about nine miles, even though I bought it over the summer. Hmm. And I'm also about to go push it off to a body shop for a full repaint, which I probably shouldn't do before the rally. I should probably make sure it's mechanically tight first. But I'm not doing that. Um, so the, my poorly conceived summer purchase of the 1984 Celica Supra oh. um, that I bought. It's a 97,000 mile lifetime California car, five speed manual, two tone medium maroon over an even darker maroon over maroon cloth interior. 
it sat for a long time before the guy I bought it from put a new fuel tank in it and got it up and running. He put a dozen miles on it. His kid didn't want it, so I bought it from him. I put less than a dozen miles on it, and it sat since. Uh, I'm getting a $3,500 full repaint on it because oh. it sat it sat in the sun for a very, very long time. Yeah. And all, the body's laser straight. It's rust-free, but it all the paint got super, super cooked. And like I found it was a guy who has like a, it's not a complete fly-by-night body shop, but it's like a, a slightly fly by night body shop. Dust, or is that kind of a form? And and then and, and so they used to do a bunch of body work for like the used department of the local Walnut Creek uh, Mercedes Benz dealership, but then they moved to the South Bay and they're like trying to like revamp their business. And I know somebody who knows them. Long story short is they're gonna they're gonna do a repaint on it for thirty five hundred bucks. Dude, awesome. We will see what the quality is, but considering I bought the car for six grand, yeah. You know, if, if it turns out to be like a B minus paint job, I'm totally okay with that. Like I'm, I'm, if it's a C minus paint job, I think I'm actually at the price point. I think I'm actually still okay with it because there's no rust to cut out. There's like not that much prep. It's just, it's just cooked. Like there's no dings. There's hmm. like one crease in a door. That's just like a deep scratch. It's going to be a skim coat. It's going to be a prep skim coat filler and go. So we'll see. They're picking it up on this upcoming Tuesday to do the paint work. I got a new big Supra billboard script for the back of the rear hatch. I got a replacement one of those. So that'll get, that'll be fresh on, on top of the paint. I asked like, Hey, I'm trying, I, I have to have it done by the 30th was my, the date I told them because I'm, I'm taking on this, this grandiose road rally. It's very prestigious. And da, 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 da. Mm. and I asked her like, well, we'll have it done in three weeks, which is, it's going to be a photo finish. And once I get it back, I still need to, like, I put new tires on it. But other than that, I've done nothing. And so I I should probably do fluids. I should probably bring some extra bits and pieces to go with it. The clutch is like, got a couple thousand miles on it. It was done at the Toyota dealership in a couple thousand miles ago, which was 1999. <laughs> wow. So we're going to see. I'm going to throw caution into the wind. I don't have a co-pilot yet unless Shadowway hops in last second. Um, but we'll see. So um, that's getting painted. I'm I'm in the process of getting that ready, and and that's that's the progress that I've made. Is is we'll we'll, we'll just see what happens. That's super rad, dude. I love those cars. I'm a huge yeah, fan. Me of too. Them. I've had uh, several of them over the years, and so cool. And I think Park Two, baby, about like an underappreciated car. Uh, and I think yeah. those. I mean, they're finally starting to pick up for nice examples. Um, there is one thing that I would do, and this is like a singer esque thing. Um, is I hate how gigantic the rear bumper is. Like if I would, sure. to, like, if I I would take it to like a great fabricator and just cut it in half, like just like yeah. depth wise. If I can just reduce the depth by half, I would be. I, I bet it would look weird as shit though. I bet if you saw it, you'd be like, yeah. yeah, it would. It would like you. You would look at it and be like, boy, that car looks good, but it it feels wrong. It'd be like uncanny valley. Like it would just, it would look like know, a, man. like a look robot trying to pick you up. Corolla. That's what I equated to the year. Think of like a JD yeah. rear bumper on 86 Corolla and look at a US spec rear bumper. Like Fair. Oh, yeah. 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 You know what, you know what does that same thing and you would never know because nobody pays attention. Gallant VR4. You look, you look at it. You look at a, a JDM Gallant of that same era, like half. And half it's not, it's not quite half, but it's, it's a close, significant dude. difference. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, or, or same with like my 924. You look at a Eurospec 924. Oh, you see a USD. You see a USDM one, and you don't think of the bumpers being huge until you see a a Eurospec one, and then it's like, oh, that's what that car is supposed to look like. So maybe uh, you might be onto something, sir. Mm-hmm. Chadwick, what are you? What have you been wrenching on? Yeah, I mean something always. Uh, speaking of potential rally cars, I've got the NX2000 back there. I've done all the mechanicals, suspension completely overhauled. I got coilover sway bars, adjustable end links, all the all the usual suspects. All the bushings have been redone by yours Fresh truly. Wheels. Uh, so it's I'm going to keep power level stock SR20 likes to rev good little motor uh, good five speed limited slip already on the car uh, just doing cosmetic stuff you know little shit in my garage fixed up the wheels uh, some other stuff but this thing's ready to rock and roll it handles like a damn dream I got it corner balanced it's uh it's ready to dance around and it's kind of cool t-top car so it's kind of fun pull the t-tops off I think that'd be be a fun little rally uh, beater I mean it's oh. really the it's the better B13 SCR right yeah it is totally no, yeah, they're super cool. I'm a, I'm a big fan of those. And yours is Achy. a really black color, too. I really like that car. 
Yeah, they're super rare. I don't even know what the number. I think they only made it's a ninety three, so it's last year. They only made a few hundred of them, and like in that color, I think it was like forty exist. <laughs> so. Yeah, Skyline GTR, if you're interested, you know, maybe we can work out a deal. Yeah. Ooh, straight swap. <laughs> I mean, I already got the better Nissan. I don't know if I want to <laughs> down market myself like that, but <laughs> combo. Power. No, it's it's combo. super cool. I got super sticky tires on it. It's going to be pretty fucking fun. So I just got to, I just got to tighten it up, you know, get it ready. What are you talking about? What, what tires? Uh, I'm just running my, I always run Falcon as any 615Ks, uh, 200 tread wear. Uh, for these lightweight cars, I, I run those on Miatas, my neon ACR. It's just, I find it for these lightweight cars, especially these front wheel drive ones, just plenty of tire. Yeah, that's a good tire. That's a good one. Hell um, yeah, brother. The, K, the 615K is still that, the original 615 design, which has been around forever. Just um, solid. Like, yeah. Good tire. I haven't tried the 660 yet. Um, I really want to check it out. Heard good things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm a huge tire nerd. That's like one of my favorite automotive topics. Um, and um, I actually, I've been, I've run a Zanny since they came out. Like, I, mm -hmm. like I've had six, what was it? The, the, was it the 215s? RT215s, right? The ones that had like the wavy, like pattern. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I have, speaking of a Corrado SLC, I had those on my Corrado SLC. Uh, and I have, I have pictures of that. I was pulling them up recently for something. And I, I did some really early, I had a, um, a rebel xt Ooh. Tire xt xt right um, X, xt would have been a i think 8.1 megapixel the xti was like a 10.2 yeah, we're going was, camera nerd yeah, go I camera nerd like circa 2009 2008 yeah that sounds about right it's probably you know what that might be an xt i bought it then and then kept it for a bit but it, or and then i had a d20 but i can't remember anyway so or 20d was it? um yeah 20d yeah, uh, D20s, Nikon. Experimenting with also uh, dice. light painting. And so I have a picture Ooh, yes. of, of me. like I, I did a super long exposure, light painting in my friend's driveway. Uh, and it was like when I first got the car and it was pretty slammed on coilovers. Uh, <laughs> and it was on, shoot, I can't remember what the name of these wheels were, but it was it was an OEM Volkswagen wheel. Mm -hmm. and, they, uh, and I put, uh, you know, RT215s on it. But I have, I'll, I'll have to show you guys pictures of that. It's pretty funny because I'm- oh, I, yeah. I, me, me thinking it was like the coolest shit ever and it was like pretty mediocre stuff you know <laughs> um, oh yeah yeah digital. i gotta thank Flickr; those things still exist oh, yes <sighs> yes p base all those old like photo sharing oh dude i i so I, I actually you know i lost all my photo bucket shit but like i yes i, I can still search for certain things and pull up threads on old forums where i post pw vortex yeah exactly where I, where i posted or honda tech where I posted pictures like by uh, that were hosted on Photo Bucket, and you, there's a way to extract the file without the watermark. I figured it out. Oh, um, look at this and, guy! Um, so I can pull up old. I have like pictures of my old Civics and shit that, like, um, you know, I had thought were gone forever that I discovered. Yeah. Recently. Um, nice. But anyways, photo nerd. Six hundred by four hundred resolution. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll tell you what we're we're gonna we're gonna close it out here. But I think um, at some point down the line in the future, we'll have to have like deep tire nerd discussion episode where we, we talk about like uh, how how the yokohama went from like uh they they went from the uh the es 100 to the yokohama s drives and all the all the various nuance and and then maybe we'll get sponsored by nexon tires because i keep joking about how we're going to get sponsored by a a, a mid-tier tire brand um when that happens when we do that we'll have to have uh artemis himself here hmm. on the pod game i'm game um and yes. uh, i i have a line on mucho macho if you're interested uh, Ooh, are they cool cat rated they're cool cat rated oh and shit actually reached out they dm'd us on the on the on our pod and they offered us sponsorship like just it was a product sponsorship and we just kind of laughed and didn't respond but oh uh, man we afford it afford that shit we, we'd be <laughs> all over that shit <laughs> yeah oh cool man that's cool cat approved maybe some okay well, longs, but <laughs> well how about this um uh art you are definitely cool cat approved here uh, as far as i'm concerned um those listening along at home perhaps watching on the youtubes um if if they want to digitally stalk you and what you do there mr cervantes uh where can the good people track that down they probably already know but just in case they don't yeah so radwood official uh is the work stuff uh driving well awesome is our pod and our rallies and our community building sort of things and then um art sees s e e s is my he does so um it's uh some car stuff 
mostly family stuff. So um, I usually just tell people to go to Radwood. <laughs> there you go. Quit stalking me. Quit staring at my 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 family. Yeah, my dog. Very cool. And your dog. Mostly the dog. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah. For those, for those. A, you guys have an audience in Austin or in Texas? The, we get a couple. Yeah. Um, my friend, your friend, our very close mutual friend who we need to have on the pod, Mr. John Greco frequents. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, the nicest man in America. Um, so, uh, hi, John. Um, yeah, so yeah, we, we do, we are, I think I actually looked this up the other day. I want to say, God, what country it wasn't Azerbaijan, but we're like number six in automotive podcasts in, in a country that starts with a, that most people don't think about it. Maybe it's Armenia. We'll say it's Armenia. Big shout out to Armenia. Um, we, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and then if uh, if you're not always already following along with us, uh, dear listener, then uh, you should do that. We are uh, another pointless automotive podcast. Uh, we have a nearly abandoned Instagram page, which is at APA Podcast. Uh, same if you want to watch the video component. Hi, I'm waving at you right now. Uh, that's also on YouTube. That's going to be APA Podcast on there. I'm Frank. Uh, ignore. You don't need to follow me. Uh, Chadwick, do you want people to stalk you digitally? No, nah, no, nah, only sexually, please. Sexually Perfect. Stalk. Okay. Everyone well, chills, right? <laughs> yeah. exactly. On 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 that lovely and mildly disturbing note. Mm. Thank you, friends. As always, guys. Bye. Take care. Until next time. Peace. Bye.